The Athletics' Nate Taylor released a full seven-round Chiefs mock draft. And, well, I'll tell you right now, there's a couple of trades that are intriguing to me. So we're going to go through all of that and tell you what I think about the picks. Maybe I don't like them. Maybe I love them. But we're going to react to it all right here on the Chiefs Support Together. We certainly do appreciate you watching. I'm your host, Jay Sanders, and if I can ask you one thing today, please like the video because... The Raiders Report, one of the bigger channels we have here at Chat Sports, maybe the biggest, right around there with the Cowboys. They've challenged us to a like battle with their latest video because the latest video, at least in Raiders terms, didn't do crazy, crazy numbers. But I think we can beat them. If we can get 600 likes, boom, we can beat the Raiders Report. They got 568 likes on the most recent video, and we have to challenge them here today. I need you to hit that like button if you have not already hit it. Because I'm telling you, we got to beat the Raiders report both on the field and off the field as well. Let's get into the athletic mock draft here. As I mentioned some trades, there were two of them right off the top of the show. And, well, I think these are both intriguing. I don't know how I feel about them, but, well, let's show them. The first one was the Chiefs with the Packers, which was a trade that we had discussed once before on this show. Chiefs are going to get the 25th overall pick in round one, and in return, they're trading away a 2025 second round pick and, of course, their first round pick at number 32. So they move up seven spots, and they give up a 2025 second round pick. Now, they weren't done just yet, because to kind of gain back some picks, they traded with the Arizona Cardinals. And with that, moved back two picks with the Cardinals, who got up to 25. Chiefs received number 27 in round one this year, number 90 in the third round this year, and number 104 in the fourth round this year. Well, the Cardinals got that number one, uh, number 25 first round pick, and then the third round pick, number 95. So with all these trades, I know it's a lot to keep track of. Let's look at what the Chiefs have on their draft board right now. Round one, pick 27 coming from Arizona. Round two, pick 64, that's their realm. Round three, pick 90 from Arizona. Round four, pick 104 from Arizona. Their round four pick that they have at 119. The Dallas pick that they got at 159. The 173 compensatory pick. And then the round seven pick 221 they got in the luxurious Sneed trade moving up uh, about 20 to 30 picks there in round seven. Now, with all this trading up, what did the Athletic do? Did they get a wide receiver? Did they get somebody maybe in the cornerback room? They went with... Adonai Mitchell, A.D., and well, I cannot agree with a pick more because I certainly do believe if he is there at pick whatever you have, 27, 25, 32, he is the option, unless for some crazy reason Romo Dunzi or Malik Neighbors falls that far, but that's highly unlikely. This is the wide receiver I've always wanted. I've told you this multiple times on the show, and I'm not going to keep patting myself on the back, but y'all asked me eight months ago, What's a wide receiver you want the Chiefs to draft? Guess what? I told you. A.D. Mitchell. Now here we are. Guess what? We're about a month away from the NFL draft. And who is it that the Chiefs want to pick? A.D. Mitchell. So hit that subscribe button because we're putting out good takes. That's all I'm saying right here. A.D. in college has been, well, nothing short of amazing, both with Georgia and with UT this past season. 55 receptions, 845 yards, 15.4 on the average, 11 touchdowns this past year. Was absolutely exceptional. And then his two years at Georgia were also great career-wise. Over 1,400 yards, an average of 15 yards per catch, and 18 touchdowns. Listen, A.D. was solid not, both, not, not just with Texas, but with Georgia as well, which, again, is why I like him so much, because he was proven at two different top-level college programs. Do you like the trade-up for A.D. Mitchell, or is this something that you do not see it being worthwhile? Type Y for yes if you like the trade-up. Type N for no if you think this was stupid. We should have just stayed at 32 and get Ladd McConkie or somebody else, Troy Franklin. I don't care why in the world did we trade those picks. That seemed dumb. Y for yes if you liked it. N for no if you don't. Let's continue on here with the round two pick from Mr. Nate Taylor and the athletic Christian Haynes. The athletic, or excuse me, offensive guard from UConn. Now, uh, funny enough, I think that a tackle is the one that needs to be more focused on. Nate Taylor's reasoning, though, behind this, well, because the Chiefs guards are getting to the back end of potentially their Chiefs career. Joe Tooney obviously suffered a pec injury in the playoffs this past year, and um, he should be healthy and ready to go by the 2024 season, but nothing yet has been confirmed, obviously. And then Trey Smith, the off awesome tackle, 
Uh, he's in his final year of his contract. And so the way that the Athletic and Nate described it as more of a preliminary pick, a, a plan for the future pick in round two, which when you're going through a 3 P, I I don't know that I necessarily love, but I do like what Haynes brings to the field. 80 overall, PFF green, allowed just one sack and only 10 hurries with four penalties and one hit. This guy was pretty solid at UConn, and I do think that he would be a good pick overall. But at the same time, I'm looking at him and thinking, okay, I don't think a guard is what the Chiefs need right now. The tackle position is where they are more of in need. You have Jawan Taylor, the penalty master, on the right side, and then a rookie right now, Wanya Morris, on the left side. I'd rather take another tackle just to make sure that you're fully fully depth-wise safe on the left tackle spot. Unless you re-sign Donovan Smith, then I actually really wouldn't mind this pick at all. Let's go to round number three with pick 90 in the trade, obviously receiving this one from Arizona. Kalen Bullock, the safety out of the University of Southern California. And Nate had an interesting take on this one, so I wanted to give you the full thing on what he said because I think he said it best. The Chiefs have four viable safeties. Justin Reed, Brian Cook, Shamari Connor. And Deion Bush. By trading Sneed, the Chiefs could move Connor to be the primary slot defender with cornerback Trent McDuffie moving to the perimeter. Adding Bullock here gives the Chiefs a fourth capable safety and a valuable contributor on special teams as a rookie. I gotta be honest, I understand the explanation, but I don't get the pick because in that entire explanation, he said they have four viable safeties, but finishes it with getting a safety would help and help the depth. You have four. I don't really know what the point is of that. Now, I would have gone a cornerback. I understand that there's a potential that you could obviously, cornerbacks and safeties are similar positions enough to where you're going to be looking at the fact of well, potentially seeing these guys in different places, but I, I just don't get it. But hey, that's just me. You know what I do get, though? My prize picks, because man, oh man, I've been hitting them good as of late, and you got to fade with me right here. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. You're going to get a $100 deposit match by using code CLNS. And I know football season may be over, but the action on the floor, well, it's just heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app or you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. It's super easy to play. You just choose two, choose two or more players. You can go two to six, pick more or less on their prize picks projections, and then you choose flex or power play. Now, told you I'm six of my last eight. Go put this one in. I've got the more on Brooke Lopez, po Brooke Lopez points and assist. I got the more than 12. Kyrie Irving, five assists. I'm going the more here. And then I got Shy, Shea Gilgis Alexander. I'm going more on 29 and a half points. Uh, he's facing the Pelicans. Listen, they're not, their defense is not the greatest, and especially the perimeter defense. So I'm going the more with Shea. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Plus, they offer an injury insurance so that if your entry stays in play, even if one of your players gets injured, or basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and then does not return in the second that player projection won't count against you, and the rest of your entry will stay live. Once again, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's Daily Fantasy Sports made easy. Round four, pick 104. Tommy Eichenberg, the linebacker out of Ohio State University, the Buckeye. And this is more of a depth option at linebacker, but you need it because you lost Willie Gay Jr. to the New Orleans Saints. And Eichenberg, he's a pretty good fit for a secondary option. We know that the Chiefs have done very well at drafting linebackers. You talk about Nick Bolton. We talk about Leo Chanel. Willie Gay was their draft pick. Well, guess what? Eichenberg also kind of fits the mold that really Brett Veach has liked to take. Past three years at Ohio State have been nothing short of really, really good. Obviously, the 2022 year was his best year by far, 86.8 in the PFF ring. Two and a half sacks, 120 tackles. He's very fit, and I think he would fit right in with this linebacker room, who, again, I feel like is pretty solid. But again, you're planning for the future at this point. You're making sure that you're going to be good, not just this year, but the years coming. Drew Tranquil, Nick Bolton, Leo Chennault, you're starting three, Cam Jones, Cole Christensen, and Jack Cochran, who I will say, the Chiefs really like Cochran. Uh, they are your backups 
We could see a lot of different places, though, that they could go for a linebacker. Just with the loss of Willie Gay Jr., Christensen probably going to be on the practice squad by the time he comes around roster time. This could be a pretty good pick. With all this being said, I know there's still moves to make. I know there's still draft picks to be made. What's your confidence level in the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl in the next year? Super Bowl 59, I want you to scale it 1 through 10. Right now, as the team stands, what is your confidence level in Chiefs winning Super Bowl 59? And getting that three-peat and championship number four. Let me know down in the comment section. Scale it 1 through 10. All right, let's go to the round four. Pick 119 pick for the Chiefs as they get a Kansas State Wildcat. What a surprise. Ben Sinat, and um, I'm going to start this off by saying the Chiefs did sign Irv Smith Jr. in free agency, who is a tight end, most recently played for the Cincinnati Bengals. Prior to that, played some pretty solid seasons before sharing his meniscus with the Minnesota Vikings. I felt it was important to bring Nate Taylor back in for this one and kind of show his explanation. We have our first prospect who has been selected in both mock drafts. This was his second mock draft that he did with the Chiefs. Obviously, had him in the second one here. Even with the Chiefs moving up in the fourth round, Sanat still makes too much sense, especially if the team wants to carry four tight ends. Obviously, Blake Bell is gone, so Irv Smith, Noah Gray, and Travis Kelsey are your three. Sanat, that could be your fourth. So, honestly, don't mind it. And, hey, Kansas State pride, I don't mind that at all. We go to round five, pick 159. It is going to be offensive lineman Drake Nugent from Michigan. And, well, this is where you potentially could have some interesting takes. Now, he can get some training behind Crean Humphrey because although he's an offensive lineman, his main position was center. And you could potentially take over in Kansas City if the Chiefs choose not to pay Creed Humphrey. The likelihood of that, I think, is a little slim. But hey, that's what we're going to say. And on top of all of it, you do have to think that you don't have a backup center right now. God forbid Creed Humphrey gets hurt. Who do you have? Drake here can come in and take over. So I don't mind the pick. I don't love the pick. But again, once you get to round five, you're at the point where it's like, okay, we're going to start kind of guessing a little bit more on these. Round five, pick 173. Dylan Johnson, a running back from Washington. A guy that I mentioned in actually my first mock draft here with the Kansas City Chiefs. I like what he brought to the table this year. Not going to lie. Over 1,000 yards, nearing 1,200, 5.1 on the average. 16 touchdowns on 233 carries. Plus, he also played through a little bit of adversity in that international championship run. Uh, playoff, he got hurt against Texas and then chose to play two weeks later against the Michigan Wolverines. And I'm going to say he didn't play all too bad considering the way that the Washington Huskies really got beat down in that game. It fills a need and a running back role is the main reason why this pick makes sense. It's a little later than I think I would go for a running back if they choose to not re-sign Jarek McKinnon or Clyde edwards helaire I know for the longest time I've said that a running back later on would be great, but I also expected them to sign a running back. I expected them to re-sign Jarek McKinnon, to re-sign Clyde edwards helaire And while I think they might still, they haven't done that yet. So given that, I may draft a running back a little higher at this current time, but I think by the time we hit draft season, we'll probably figure out what their mindset is coming to all this. All right, the final pick of this mock draft from the athletic, Marcellus Dial, the cornerback from the University of South Carolina, the other USC, at round seven, pick number 221. You're just throwing someone out there at this point. Um, round seven, they're always kind of just hope you hit Isaiah Pacheco. That was a hit. Uh, I do find it funny, though, because... The athletic and Nate Taylor's reasoning was honestly hilarious. They said, quote, Dial was the best available cornerback who played in college below the Mason-Dixon line. That was their reasoning. Welcome to round seven of the NFL mock draft season. They have no reasoning. They said you were below a imaginary line that we draw and you play cornerback. Cool. That works. Eh, at least I am not in the wrong for picking a two-lane cornerback, Jerry Monroe, in my mock draft. That's all I'll say. So, eh, We'll just have to see. But Let's go through this mock draft one more time. A.D. Mitchell, round one, pick 27. Christian Haynes, at round two, pick 64. Kalen Bullock, at round three, pick 90. Tommy Eichenberg, at round four, pick 104. 
We go into round four with the third round four pick. Ben, Sin ben Sinat, the tight end from Kansas State at 119. The center, Drake Nugent at round five, pick 159. Dylan Johnson at round five, pick 173. And then Marcellus Davis, who, quote, plays below the Mason Dixon line at round seven, number 221. Grade the Athletics mock draft. Do you like it? Do you think it's stupid? Um, I don't really know. A, B, C, D, or F? Get down in the comment section. How do you feel about all of these picks made by Nate Taylor? I'm saying B minus. And while I really kind of wanted to give it a C, I do understand his reasoning for some of the picks that I was a little uncertain about. I think he really backed them up well. To me, I think that's the more important thing. Posting a mock draft on Twitter, on X, whatever, it's great. But sometimes you just get things that are taken out of context. Whereas when you get to explain them, like you get to watch the Chiefs report, watch everybody and we explain our picks, I think it adds up a little more and makes it to where if it's a pick that's stupid, we at least can explain and tell you why it would make sense. As always, we do appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. And if you're not subscribed already, what are you doing? We're putting out content every single day, sometimes twice a day. Hit that subscribe button, Chiefs Kingdom. Peace out.